April 8th, James Chalmers. When we are secure in our future, we can be fearless in our present. When James Chalmers and his wife arrived in New Guinea, it was an unknown land full of terrors, savagery and human degradation and cannibalism. The sanctity of human life was unknown and every man seemed to be a thief and a liar. The men were most proud of their tattoos, but they were only entitled to have them when they had murdered someone. Chalmers intended to introduce the New Guinea cannibals to Christ. Chalmers' fearlessness must have been a great factor of success in his hazardous work. He disarmed men by boldly going amongst them completely unarmed. As his boat gently bobbed up and down outside another primitive village, they waited a short distance from the shore in their usual way, so the villagers had time to notice the strange vessel in the water and to take in the shock of seeing a white man for the very first time. In the hot New Guinea sun, suspicious savages with barbaric markings on their faces, sticks in their noses and human bones around their necks got into their canoes and paddled out to Chalmers' boat. Chalmers spoke peacefully and gave them gifts. Things like pieces of hoop iron and red braid. He let them know that he was leaving, but he would be back to tell them about a great being they did not know. He had a way about him that instantly disarmed people. A short time later, Chalmers did return to the village and this time brought his wife with him. They were greeted with a warm welcome. The villagers touched their noses and their bellies and then rubbed noses, as was their custom. Even the village chief invited them into his home. Human skulls decorated the room and blood-stained weapons lined the walls. And Mrs. Chalmers did her best not to let her angst show. Chalmers and his wife built their own hut in the village and began to teach the villagers about Christ. One afternoon, as they labored, a group of armed savages surrounded them and began to yell, Tomahawks, knives, irons and beads. The villagers said that if the missionaries didn't supply these things, they would be killed. The Chalmers told them, You can kill us, but never a thing will you get from us. He always refused to make terms with force. The missionaries spent a very anxious and restless night in their hut. But the next morning, the leader of the angry visitors returned, and this time in a very different manner. Apologetic about the previous night's escapades, he wanted to be their friend. Now that you are unarmed, Chalmers said, we can be friends. He invited the once hostile villager into his hut and offered him gifts and conversation. And he won not only his hut, but the hearts of cannibal groups throughout the land for Christ. Psalm 27, one says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What frontier might God be calling you to pursue in spite of the fears that stand in your way? What steps can you take today to begin moving your life in obedience to God? When we are secure in our future, we can be fearless in our present. Hello men, today is April 8th and our story is about James Chalmers. My name is Blake Maddox and I'm the Executive Director for 365 Christian Men. Doesn't matter how many times I watch or listen to these stories, I'm always impacted by how men responded to what they believed was the call and the will of God. Today's story uh, would cause in the natural us to question, why would a man take such risks why would a man make decisions to go to an unreached people group that were known for being cannibals? So as I thought about this story, this is the thought that hit me. How does someone know and discern the will of God for their lives? Especially when it comes to putting ourselves 
in a risky situation. James certainly did that, and the outcome was not what we would call ideal, but yet he was prompted by God to do what he did, and he went where God called him to do. So my challenge, men, for us today is this. When you are seeking God and asking God to direct you according to his purpose and will, there's three things that are key, especially two of them. The first one is if you want to hear the voice of God, God primarily today speaks through his word. So if you're asking God, if you're pursuing and seeking his wisdom for your next steps, go to the word of God first. The second thing is the spirit of God which is our comforter. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would be our comforter, our counselor, and he would guide us into all truth. Those are primarily the two that I rely on, that I lean on. And the third would be this. There's wisdom in the multitude of counsel. If you are desiring to know what God's will is for your life, first his word, then the spirit of God, and then trusted counsel from men who you know, respect, and love. So my challenge for us today is, If we're going to step out and do God's will, let's make sure we prioritize those three things.